What's up, what's up everybody? With the addition of auto farming in Summoners War, people have been going through crystals faster than ever before. So today, we are gonna take a look at seven different ways for you to get more crystals on your account. Now, if you've been playing for a long time, you're already end game, you probably know most, if not all of these seven different things that I'm gonna talk about today. If you are coming back to the game from being gone for a while, this might be a nice refresher. If you are new to the game, this might be, well, this should probably have a lot of helpful information for you. Uh, so, seven different ways to get more crystals on your account the best ways in my opinion uh, let's get it started but first a brief word from raid shadow I'm just kidding I'm just kidding Tip number one, I got you with the Raid Shadow Legends, didn't I? You really thought that was going to be one. Tip number one, events. This is uh, fairly cut and dry, fairly straightforward. A lot of people know, like, oh, events give you lots of resources. They give you a lot more than uh, you realize. If you're not maximizing those events, if you're not doing those events, they really give you way more than you realize. Even more so than crystals, they give you a lot of energy. A lot of energy for these events, right? But it's hard to put a number on how many crystals you get from events, how much energy you get from events, how many scrolls you get from events, because they're always changing. And for things like the 5th and 6th anniversary, they tend to do a lot more events with a lot better rewards. So uh, probably about two, two to three thousand crystals per month from uh, from doing the, all these events. Because there's quite a few that there's quite a few of them going on at the same time, and those little bits of crystals uh, really do add up. Tip number two, arena, specifically the tally at the end of the week. Now, it's fine to leave an easy defense in the middle of the week. However, at the end of the week, when there's the arena tally on Sunday, you get a certain amount of points, or you get a certain amount of crystals, sorry, depending on what rank you are, right? Many people farm arena points during the week, but simply setting a decent defense around Friday, Saturday, instead of a purposely easy one, can push you to 75, 100, 150, or more crystal wars for the week. Those are for the lower levels, right? That's not even for, like, trying to get G1 or whatever, right? And these things add up. Like, the extra little crystals here and there add up and add up and add up, um, as long as you actually do your wings, right? Uh, so if you are a fighter one player, you get 200 crystals, uh, 200 crystals a month, a month, right? So this is a monthly re uh, re results at the end. Uh, if you are a fighter three, you just set a decent defense and you push yourself up to fighter three. That's an extra 200 crystals a month, right? If you uh, push yourself to C1, 600 crystals, C3, a thousand crystals. So we're, we're talking a big, big difference, right? If you are a fighter one player and you're just keep finishing fighter one 200 crystals a month compared to a g1 player that's just finishing g1 maybe they're not like pushing really hard to get to like g2 g3 but they're still finishing g1 with a decent defense um they're still getting a thousand extra crystals from that arena every single week so if you may not be able many of you cannot get to that part where it's like oh i'm just gonna casually get g1 like that's asking a lot for most people but if you can if you are fighter one and you set a little bit better of a defense and end fighter three, it adds up. That's 200 extra crystals a month just by remembering to set a better defense on the uh, on the weekends. And I am personally guilty, like on my alts, I'm personally guilty of not just setting a better defense and missing out on a lot of those crystals. That's something that I personally do, which even though I'm end game, uh, I still need a reminder every so often to be like, yo set a better defense on on your alts on the on the weekends because then you're going to just get more crystals of reward and it's going to add up. Tip number 3 is do siege. Just doing it, right? Even if you are not that great at siege, at least just doing it. If you get some wins, you get some losses, uh, you will still wind up getting some crystals at the end of every siege and these things add up. For example, uh, well I mean unless you are early game you've been playing for like six to eight weeks or something like that you're like i don't even have any monsters i'm trying to get good but uh i don't have any monsters that's a different story like if you can hit if you're in a super low level guild and you can hit whatever you hit maybe hit some four star defenses right uh, i mean four monsters that are unawakened and only four at four stars not natural four stars unawakened but that's kind of a different story if you've been playing uh actively for six months nine months a year and playing actively, actively, not just having an account for a year and then not actually playing. Um, if you're playing actively, you should have enough stuff to do at least some whatever level of siege that you can actually do, right? That you can actually complete. But I've noticed, uh, I've been doing siege on all my alts, and I've noticed that I kind of need to now with the auto farming, right? Which is kind of fun because it's been uh, it's been kind of enjoyable. I've been missing like normal non-insane siege but uh anyway even if you suck you can still squeak a few wins out and get a solid amount of crystals and guild points this is for example a screenshot from like the lowest of my alts is like no i think it was like yeah it was like fighter three uh guild siege got um 100 crystals that's not that bad right uh, 100 crystals for one siege two sieges a week four weeks uh 
I say four weeks in a year, four weeks in a month. So that's 800 crystals, right? And that's on the conservative side. You can get way, way, way more than this, right? Um, if you want even more crystals and guild points, and a lot of my uh, a lot of my alts actually get uh, much more than that. Uh, if you want more crystals and guild points, learn to practice the fine art of siege farming lower levels than you are. Don't get, I don't want to make it seem like I am endorsing like, oh, if you're a Guardian player, you should go into Fighter Siege and set a whole bunch of insane Guardian defenses with LD5s so that people are miserable and can't take any of your towers. Like, don't be a jerk, right? But I'm saying like, if you are like farming lower level and you're trying to get the points and you're like soloing bases, you know what I mean? The, the art of like soloing bases and not being a jerk with setting impossible defenses and making people frustrated and want to throw their phones. Uh, so don't, don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk about it, but you can still like do solo. I, I, I more mean soloing bases with single units for a lot of contribution, right? So people still do that. Um, they did nerf it though. Uh, oh yes, did I mention the rewards were also buffed from Siege? Yet more reasons to uh, participate in Siege, right? Uh, well, you, you, you can even get rewards from not participating, but that's, that's besides the point. Um, you can also get crystals from the boxes too. The amounts were buffed getting crystals from the boxes, especially in higher levels. Uh, so that's also nice. Even without the, uh, the rewards from here, at the bottom of here, and like the 100 here, uh, if you can get another 50 from a box, that's not bad, right? Um, so, yeah, here. Siege farming was tweaked around a year ago, but you can still get massive rewards if you do it right. Five, up to 5,000 plus crystals per month if you aggressively pursue it. Uh, my personal accounts that do not siege farm, that just do siege whatever level we are, we do it, and I don't try to, like, solo base or anything, uh, getting around a 1,000 to 2,000 crystals a month casually, when it, just casually, just by just doing siege at whatever level siege is available, not trying to do a certain level or do a certain strategy or anything, just like hitting whatever I can hit. Uh, 1,000 to 200, uh, 1,000 to 2,000 extra crystals a month. It's a big thing that uh, just doing whatever siege you have available that you can actually do and beat whatever tower towers you can beat, uh, it really does add up. Tip number four, do your arena rivals. This seems extremely obvious, right? It seems extremely obvious, but you would be surprised how many people I see all the time that don't do their arena rivals. They're like, oh, Bagel, I don't do PvP. Like, okay, but you just complain that you're out of crystals and you don't do PvP and you complain that you don't do Dragons B, uh, you, you can't do Dragons B10, you can't do Giants B10, but you don't have any towers upgraded. I'm kind of getting off topic, aren't I? Right? You don't have any towers upgraded because you didn't do any arena, you didn't do any PvP because you don't do PvP. But at least do your rivals. At least do your rivals. It's basically, it's not really even PvP. <laughs> arena rivals are basically like the PvE version of PvP, right? So let's say, for example, it's super easy. Uh, five minutes of clearing arena rivals equals 23 crystals and 45 glory points. Like, if all of them are available, and you go through the entire list, 23 crystals and 45 glory points, it kind of adds up, right? Uh, so many people that don't do them. Let's assume that if you cleared, and they're different times, though. Here's the thing, that every rival is uh, resets at a different time. So if you clear one, it's like 12 hours until you can clear, the, uh, clear it again. But the next one is maybe like 18 hours until you can clear it again. And then the one after that is like 24 hours until you clear it again. So let's assume... Or let's, for, for an easier way to think about it is like, let's say if you clear the whole list once a day, if you're able to clear the whole list once a day, maybe you clear one, uh, one rival more than once a day, but you clear one rival less than once a day, kind of, let's say that it evens out to, uh, to once a day, just for math's sake, uh, instead of trying to calculate every single one, but let's say, uh, you can go through the whole list once a day, 30 rivals clears, 30, 30 days, uh, in a, in a month. Uh, equals 690 crystals and 1,350 glory points every month just doing your rival clears, right? So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big thing that a lot of people miss out on just because they're like, I don't do PvP. Look how many arena wings I have. And they're like, look how proud, a thousand arena wings. I'm like, you missed out on so much of everything. You have no tower upgrades. You have all those crystals you missed from rivals. That's not a thing to be proud of. That's like, just do your wings. Just do them. Number five, and this one might be a new concept to a lot of you. Don't rush TOA. So we know that TOA gives you a lot of rewards. If you don't know that TOA gives you a lot of rewards and you've like, been playing the game for two weeks, TOA gives you a lot of rewards. Definitely do TOA. However, 
for many of you, like myself as well, that have been playing for a long, long, long period of time, and you just do TOA whenever it opens. This is a concept that was introduced to me by RNG Jesus from the Europe server. He's like, I stopped rushing TOA and I started just waiting for the free TOA events and I found that I could do enough TOA if I rushed TOA at those uh, those free TOA times because the game will have these like little events where it's like free TOA, right? And a lot of us don't even think about uh, doing TOA specifically then. We're just like, whenever it resets, I'm just going to do it because I want those rewards ASAP, right? Uh, so you actually save two to 300 crystals worth of uh, savings with energy refreshes if you wait for the free TOA and you try to blast through stages as fast as you can on uh, on those. So he says he, uh, I think he said he saves close to 300 crystals for himself because he tries to do it fast. But if someone was slower, a little bit more on the mid game side of the spectrum uh, or less, then they probably save like 150 to 200 crystals. But still, that's a decent amount of crystals just by waiting for waiting do TOA at the time when uh, when it gives you the free TOA. It's just so simple, such a simple concept that I was just like, I was like, for me personally, I was like, I don't care. And now I'm kind of thinking like, eh, maybe, well, why not wait? Cause you don't actually get anything from rushing TOA. It's like, here you go. I'm top of the leaderboard on loosening every stage faster, clicking the buttons faster than, uh, well, I mean, it's kind of different now. There's a different strategy now than it used to be, because it used to be just Lucian. That's besides the point. The point is, don't rush TOA, wait for uh, free TOA, and again, this is a new thing to me, because I wasn't really even thinking too much about it, but he was like, yeah, you don't actually get any rewards uh, from doing TOA as fast as you possibly can. You get more out of it from waiting for a free TOA. I was like, oh, okay, I'll, uh, I'll save that extra couple hundred crystals a month then. Number six on the list is World Boss. Now, I know many of you are thinking, again, as with the Arena Rivals, you're thinking for World Boss, you're like, Bagel, doesn't everyone already do World Boss? No, not everyone does World Boss. And a lot of the mentality behind not doing World Boss is like, oh, the rewards suck. I just get white three-star runes. I just get green runes and just terrible runes and I get uh, essences. I don't want that, right? It's not really about the runes and the essences. It's not about like, do you get legendary scrolls from World Boss? 99% of the time, you're not getting legendary scrolls from World Boss. But you do get every so often, you do get little amounts of crystals, right? Uh, not always. It's RNG. It's based on RNG. If you get the crystals, you don't get the crystals. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you use more energy than crystals you get. Sometimes you get more crystals than energy. And of course, the higher level you can actually get in the world, boss, the better the rewards are, the more likely you are to get crystals, the more crystals you will get uh, in there. But it's really not about the crystals in every box that you get, even though sometimes they're pretty nice. It's about at the end of when the world boss is defeated, the rewards you get from the crystals there. So you can get quite Quite a decent amount of crystals and remember it happens multiple times a month so you can get a quite a decent amount of crystals throughout the course of the month to uh, supplement your crystal intake and I see a lot of people still not doing this now I mean it's less important to do this if you're like get if you're like early game you're getting F ranks you're like I'm gonna keep getting F ranks it's like you don't have to worry so much about it if you're early game, but like the more you progress the longer you play if you're playing six months nine months a year or more then the better the rewards are going to be, and the more it's actually just going to be more of a gain than anything else, right? And of course, the, every day you get random, like, white runes that you sell, and garbage runes, and gar and, and essences, right? At least you don't have to farm for essences if you get enough essences from World Boss. But if you, unless you build, like, 9,000 things, and you're like, I'm going to fuse every monster under the sun. <laughs> some people do, some people love to fuse monsters. But, that's besides the point, uh, World Boss is, is still nice for the rewards, still a nice uh, way to generate extra crystals. And last but not least, number seven on the list, not really personally my favorite way to get crystals, but I figure I would include it because I know a lot of people go for this every single day. They're like, I gotta make sure that I get all the, do every single one of my dailies and then unlock that last one and get the extra crystals from that. So if you're in the, if you're in the super free to play every little bit counts group, this is something you probably already do, but it's still, uh, not correct grammar, uh, but it's probably still worth mentioning, uh, and I know people are going to complain if I don't mention it, right? Even though I personally don't like this, I personally don't care too much about this, but between the regular missions and the bonus missions, 25 crystals per day adds up to 750 crystals per month. If you spend money and you don't care, then it's not really going to be... It's probably not worth your time to continue doing this, although you could argue that some of the other ones on this list may not be entirely worth your time. Um, 
but I still think that it's worth mentioning because I know other people care about it. So even if I don't personally uh, care about the dailies, I personally, I'm, I have so many accounts, man. I'm not gonna do every single daily on every single one of my accounts. But if you guys have one account and you are free to play, this is something that you should probably consider doing, right? So 750 crystals per month is actually, it's not, it's not that bad, especially, and all that, all these things add up. Like if you get 500 to 600 from here, and you get 200 to 300 from here, and you get 700 from here, and you get 1,000 from there, all these little things, just continuing to implement all these different things will help you uh, be free to play uh, and have the resources that you need for being free to play. Personally, my favorite one is Siege, because I think you get a lot of good rewards from Siege. Um, and it and it, and remember it's not even just like oh a uh, hundred crystals here or two hundred crystals here it's like that's a couple times a week and then every week so you can get a decent amount of crystals from siege uh people have been, it's not not new information though people have been doing it for quite a while but uh anyway i just wanted to mention it all because there's been a lot of people that have been complaining lately about like i have no crystal <laughs> so i figured i'd go over some of the best ways to get crystals uh in the game uh, because we haven't really touched on it in uh, quite a while. Anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was helpful. Maybe you guys uh, just, maybe it's a refresher for some people. Because I know there's a lot of people that have already been playing for so long that they're like, oh, I already know all this stuff. But maybe it's a nice refresher to like keep it in your mind of like, oh, maybe I should consider doing this. Maybe I should consider doing that. Maybe I should actually do my siege battles, right? Uh, anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Or the TOA thing, right? The rushing TOA, because it really wasn't even a thing that I was thinking about until it was uh, brought up with me. And I was like, you know what? That does make a lot more sense to just wait for the free TOA and just do it then, right? So anyway, that's it for this one. You just got to have patience. None of us have that. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this one. I will see you guys always in the next one.